hey you guys welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new today's video is going to be my birth story of our beautiful daughter vivian who i have here with me for this video she is taking a snooze she is going to be hungry very soon though so i'm gonna try to do this in as much detail but as promptly as i can um if you haven't already seen i did post my birth vlog so i will leave a card for that right here if you want to go ahead and watch that video first i will be walking through everything that happened the day of my birth and it was crazy like so exciting and so wonderful but honestly like i don't know it's just such a whirlwind it everything happens so fast and before you know it you have this little baby who depends on you for everything but it's just like the cutest thing in the world and yeah i mean it's crazy and this is gonna be the first time that i've really sat down and talked about it so excited to do that subscribe if you are not already to stay up to date with all of my videos and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and let's go ahead and jump right in For my birth, I ended up being induced. I was induced at 39 weeks and four days, and my induction was set for 9 a.m. So I had been checked three weeks in a row prior to my induction, and each time I was 1.5 centimeters dilated and 70% effaced. So three weeks in a row of that, and I did all of the things, all of the things. I curb walked. I did like dance videos, I did the activating labor YouTube video, I was pumping, literally anything that you google that you can try, I did it and I like tried to go into labor on my own and it just was not happening, my body was not having it. So anyway, I go to my appointment which was two days before my induction and we had set an induction probably two months ahead of my due date. And we kind of just decided like, let's play it by ear. Let's see how things are going. And you can always cancel it if you end up deciding that you don't want to do it. So because my progress was so stagnant for literally three weeks, I did end up deciding that I wanted to go forward with the induction. I know that a lot of people have their own opinions on this and that's just what worked best for me and my family and my birth. So, you know, no hate for anyone who does it any other way. I hope there's no hate for me and the way that I felt was right for me and my body. That is just the decision that my husband and I came to. So Saturday rolls around, 9 a.m. We end up going to McDonald's. Um, they did let me eat something beforehand. They said I could have one more meal, which I'm really glad that I did um, because I wasn't able to eat again until the next day at noon. So definitely was rough. I went over 24 hours, what is that, 9 to 12, 28-ish hours without food. Um, so when I got there, they went ahead and set everything up and got me all hooked up to the IVs and they checked me. And I did have, um, because I was there for a while, we went through, I think, four different nurses, maybe three. And the first nurse that I had was a training nurse. Um, so she checked me and she said I was still a one and a half. So the plan was to go ahead and start with a Foley bulb, which they stick in you and it like stretches out your cervix. Oh, your baby. And it stretches out your cervix to be a four, um, around a three or a four, and then it falls out on its own. So that was the initial plan was to do that until I got to a three or a four. Well, then the midwife who does the Foley bulbs came in to insert that and she like checked me because she, you have to use your hand to guide it in there or whatever. And she was like, wow, uh, yeah, you're a four and a half. We don't need to do this which was so exciting for me because literally the Foley bowl was the thing that I was the most scared about. I really, really did not want to do it. So that just truly changed the vibe of my labor, I feel like. I went from just being really, really nervous and scared of the pain to being excited that like, not only is my body actually doing something, but this is gonna take, you know, however long off of the induction process. So, 
because of that, we were able to go ahead and just start on Pitocin. So um, they did let me know that when they break my waters, it would take about an hour to get an epidural, the epidural process, because I would need to finish a bag of fluid before they can do the epidural and then the time it takes to get the epidural placed and then the time it takes for it to like kick in. So they let me know, you know, kind of just take that into consideration when you decide you want the epidural, that it's gonna be about an hour um, from that point of the decision to where I'm actually feeling it. So I started on Pitocin and it they started me on a one and they bumped it up one every 30 minutes. So like I was at a one and then 30 minutes later they bumped it to a two, 30 minutes later they bumped it to a three. Um, I only did, ended up going up to an eight and this was all before they broke my waters and I was having contractions on the machine, but like I couldn't feel them. Um, so they checked me and then I was a five. This was after maybe an hour or two. So I hadn't made a whole lot of progress, um, but they did say that I was now 100% effaced. So they wanted to go ahead and break my water at this point. And they did say that because I was 100% effaced, they thought that the remainder of my labor would go pretty quickly. Um, so just to kind of be prepared that that might happen. So we went ahead and we broke my waters. I wasn't sure if I should have gotten it before or after, um, but because I wasn't in any pain and I was at an eight on the Pitocin, I decided, you know, let's play it by ear. I still wasn't hundred percent sure that I was going to get the epidural. Um, in my mind, I was like, you know, I'm handling the pain really well. If I handle the pain well the whole time, maybe I like won't get the epidural. So she breaks my waters and first of all that literally feels like you're just peeing yourself it's kind of crazy like so much liquid i now, now know i mean when your water breaks you will definitely know it was a lot um they had to change the like pad thing it was just like a burp cloth but like very large they had to change that over and over again because it was just so much Anyway, the second that they broke my water, I kid you not, maybe 45 to 85 seconds later, I was in excruciating pain. Like, holy shit, I could not believe how much the contractions hurt. And I was definitely feeling them and they were extremely frequent. The nurse had said that I was having contractions two minutes apart when I was just on Pitocin. And once other, my waters were broken and I was actually feeling the contractions, they were 30 seconds to a minute apart and they were rough. Like I was crying. I tried the comb trick to like squeeze the comb to redirect your mind on a different pain. And that did not do anything. The comb did not work at all. I had my husband pushing on my back, rubbing my back, punching my back. Um, nothing literally it was excruciating so within two minutes of feeling that pain i said to the nurse and the midwife i was like get the epidural start the bag we're doing the epidural get the epidural and so i had to work through about an hour of um unmedicated labor and it was so hard and i have so much respect for the moms that are able to do it without an epidural because Oh my Lanta, was that just not a good time. Oh, it was so bad. So anyway, then the anesthesiologist comes in after I finish my bag of fluids and he starts prepping me and he was so awesome. I was really, really nervous. I had said to him, I'm really scared to get the epidural. I'm really scared to not have control over my body. Like, is there a way to do like a light version of the epidural? Because I'm really, really scared to not feel my body. So he said it, that an epidural done correctly, you should be able to feel your legs. Like you should not be completely numb. That was not the plan. I would still f have feeling in my legs. I just would have some numbness and I wouldn't feel my contractions. So the pain was so bad, I like didn't really care. I mean, I definitely still had some anxiety, but the pain of the contractions like overpowered the anxiety that I had. So he placed the epidural and it was like a little pinch, but it really wasn't that bad. It honestly felt kind of like them sticking the needle in my arm to do the IV, just like in my back. So it wasn't terrible. 
And then um, they laid me down to have it spread and I felt it spread through my legs and it literally felt, the best way I could explain it to my husband was like my lower half was in a really, really warm bath just the heaviness that you feel in your legs after you get out of a really hot bath that like very relaxed feeling that's what it felt like it didn't feel scary like i had imagined and so i literally i could move my legs i could move my feet i could move my toes i was able to like put my legs up and like lift myself off the bed if i needed to when they were moving the pad and changing it i could lift my butt off the table and that honestly was so, so helpful for me and my birth experience to not have the epidural completely numb me. Like truly, it was incredible. But I also couldn't feel any of my contractions, like nothing, nothing at all. It was awesome. So then maybe an hour goes by and I am starting to feel my contractions a little bit. It actually might've been two hours. That's the one thing they don't tell you about labor is time just like goes like this I mean you're not paying attention to the clock you're really paying attention to your body and like what's going on and it just goes so fast that I really couldn't tell you where things were and what time they were um, I just know when my induction started and when she was born so all of these little nuances were somewhere in between there um, but anyway so at this point I'm feeling great um, but I do start to feel some pain in my back and um, I said to my nurse I was like, you know, I'm feeling a little bit of pain in my back, but it wasn't anything bad Like it wasn't even as bad as a period cramp um, And so she was like, okay, well, let me check you again You know once you start getting closer to transition you can feel like pressure through the epidural no matter like how strong your epidural is so she went ahead and checked me and I was nine and a half centimeters dilated and 100% effaced. So she said I just had a little bit of a lip on baby's head that needed to go. And my husband, we were trying to plan out like when he would go home to let the dogs out because we just left our dogs at home um, without a sitter or anything. And he had left probably 30 minutes before that to go let our dogs out. And we only lived 10 minutes away so it wasn't like I wasn't scared he was gonna miss the birth or anything but he left when I was a five and so hearing that I was a nine and a half I was like oh shit like he really needs to come like right now so I texted him and I said hey I'm a nine and a half you need to get here like now and he texted me back and was like I'm walking through the doors right now so the timing was really really good um he came back up and then um we waited probably 30 minutes I'd say and she came in and she checked me again and I was at 10 so then we started doing practice pushes and we did practice pushes for about 30 minutes um, and I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna be really really vulnerable right now pushing was extremely disheartening for me um, I'm a first-time mom this is my first baby and I was just getting so frustrated with myself because I felt like I couldn't do it correctly um, every time I pushed she like directed me to do something different um, like said that I wasn't you know it wasn't going as good as it should be she, I'm not trying to make it sound like she was rude she wasn't rude she was super helpful but I just like could not do it I couldn't get it done right I don't know and the way of holding myself up to grab the handles plus trying to push plus trying to hold my breath I just like could not concentrate on the right things I think like you've never had a baby before you don't know the right way to do it so I definitely set myself up for failure a little bit when it came to pushing. And that's something that I know go forward I want to be better at is like having grace with myself and being patient and knowing that it's going to, she's going to come no matter what. There's no need to like get frustrated with yourself because I did, I got really, really frustrated. So she called the doctor in um, after 30 minutes of pushing and then I pushed for probably 40 more minutes, probably probably an hour. So I ended up pushing for about an hour and a half. Um, and I will say I didn't push for, for the button for more medicine because I wanted to be able to push effectively, which I wasn't doing. Um, and I regret that because my epidural did start to wear off when I started pushing. And 
eventually because I was pushing for so long the epidural had completely worn off so I did feel all of the pushing I felt her head come out um, it was not a good time it hurt extremely bad literally felt my hip bones or pelvic bones or whatever bones they are pulling apart and it it kind of feels like the biggest poop of your life but worse like it it just hurts so bad and I screamed get her out like so loud which you can hear me say in the birth vlog I just was so over it and I was in so much pain and so frustrated but then she came out and they laid her on my chest and I just was so in awe and also just really tired and I remember I looked at her and I was like what do I do with it because she was just laying on me and I mean it was my baby and it, it was just so crazy such a whirlwind um oh it was so crazy but yeah so they laid her on my chest and I just remember feeling just out of this world like I was in a movie or something it wasn't my real life like just out of body crazy euphoric like kind of high and so much pain I remember saying over and over like my vagina my oh my crotch my vagina hurt so bad um, so it was just this crazy feeling of pain and euphoria that no one could have explained to me and I remember asking people so many questions trying to figure out like what birth feels like and there's really no way to describe it until you go through it yourself honestly but after I birthed her things did go a little south and it was really scary for about an hour and a half um, I did have a hemorrhage after she came out and she was born in meconium so she had her first poop um, while I was pushing because she was in distress and so she wasn't breathing for the first like two minutes and her oxygen levels were low and I was losing a lot a lot of blood so within probably a minute of her being born there were 30 nurses in our room there were like um, sounds going off everywhere. I had people poking me in the legs and the arms with shots. This is TMI, but my doctor was like putting medicine in my butt. She put um, something really big in my vagina and like blew it up to stop the bleeding. And it was just like, I didn't know what was happening. And I kept asking like, what is this? What is that? What's happening? What's going on? And she communicated with me very, very well, which I really appreciate because I'm someone who operates um, better with more information than less information. I know not everyone is like that, but I am, and I just wanted to know what was going on. Um, and she had let me know that I was losing a lot of blood. Every, like, 15 minutes, she was like, you're still losing a lot of blood. Um, and so that was really scary. She did eventually get it under control. Um, the last thing that she did was put that thing in my vagina that blew up to stop the bleeding. That was probably after... 45 minutes I'd say again my frame of time is terrible because I wasn't sitting there looking at the clock you know I'm sitting there like am I going to die um, so it was really really hard because my baby wasn't doing okay we had the NICU team in there I wasn't doing okay we had every nurse on the floor in there trying to like shoot me full of shit and my poor husband was just looking at me like you're okay everything's okay like she's okay you're okay doing everything he could to make us feel better even though obviously no one knew at that point like how things were gonna go um and she did let me know after the fact like i don't know what the um volume term she used was like if it was milliliters milligrams or ounces liters whatever uh so if you are a nurse and you know this definitely leave it in the comments down below because I would like to say this correctly and not speak um, out of term but she did say that I lost 1500 blank whatever the unit measurement is of blood and she said for a vaginal birth up to 500 is normal and for a c-section up to a thousand is normal and I lost 1500 so it was pretty bad um, she definitely was like worried about me and I did have to have a bag of blood, a blood transfusion also, because of how much I had lost. And then, um, I'm like sweating, reliving it right now. So yeah, it got really scary and there are parts that I'm choosing to leave out right now, just that I'm not ready to talk about. 
I just kind of want to do the surface overview here because afterbirth was really not a good time. Um, they did take her and monitor her overnight. Um, so she was formula fed the first night. I was able to sleep um, for about six hours the first night, which I really needed. Um, losing all the blood. I was so delirious. Like I didn't know where I was. Oh, I totally forgot. I also puked during birth, which no one in my family had done. So I don't know if that was just from the blood loss or what. Um, but I puked like six or seven times in the process of pushing and then after. So that was weird. Um, but because of that, I wasn't allowed to drink any water. And they were like giving me oxygen, which made my throat really dry. And um, I just remember being so, so thirsty and no one would give me any water. And that sucked. But I ended up being okay. Um, I had to stay for two days or a day and a half. And I had to have, uh, it was three different antibiotics. I couldn't tell you the names of them if I tried um, on a round. So I had two of them every two hours. And then the third one every six hours. And those were just an IV drip. And then she would come in every hour and like push on my stomach and check me. And then also that thing that they inserted into my vagina to stop the bleeding, um, that was put in right after she was born. She was born at 11.09 p.m. on the 14th. Um, and then that got taken out the next morning at 7.30 a.m. So I did sleep with that in and it did not feel great coming out. It kind of felt like um, birthing the placenta because it wasn't like nearly as big as the baby and I didn't have to push like she pulled it out but the like slithery weird feeling like felt very similar to losing the placenta. So anyway they brought baby back to me the next morning and I was able to start taking sips of water and I was able to eat at like noon which really really helped me start to feel better and by the next evening after birth i felt way way better i didn't feel delirious i didn't feel lightheaded and nauseous like i was and i started to kind of like actually be excited and i know that sounds terrible but i just i was so out of the world after birth that i like didn't even really comprehend that i had a kid anymore i just kind of was like where am i like really spacey really sick all i wanted to do was sleep so I kind of leaned a lot on my husband in that first time like he did the first skin to skin um, and I am kind of sad to have like missed out on that a little bit but I also know that it was what was best for me in that situation and the next day I was much more mentally able to like be her mom and be there for her and be excited for her and now she's just the light of my life and I am obsessed with her and I never put her down and oh, she's just everything to me. I love her so much. But yeah, that is my birth story. And it was crazy. And as traumatic as it was, seeing her and loving her and getting to know her little personality, I would 110% do it over again. She is starting to try to eat right now. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope that... I can relate to some of you or, you know, maybe you take something positive away from this video, but I am looking forward to this new journey of life and I'm truly just so happy to have our little girl with us. So thank you again so much for watching and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye.